SSH or Secure Shell allows you to connect between computers and encrypt traffic between them. For example, I use SSH to connect to my virtual private server and to my office computer. Usually it works only through the terminal. However, you can also connect it to your file manager or use some graphical programs like FileZilla, if you do not want to type commands. And you can also use graphical forwarding to open graphical programs from your remote server in your local computer. So in this video, you will learn how to install, configure and use SSH. In particular, you will learn how to configure local client machine, remote server computer, make sure your firewall doesn't block the SSH connection, how to establish SSH connection with the terminal, FileZilla and File Manager, how to open remote graphical programs and how to transfer files using SSH. Before we start with the actual tutorial, I would like to recommend you AppCloud Virtual Server Provider. If you have never used SSH or you just need a private server, you can register at appcloud.com and get $25 to your account with the promo code LU25. With AppCloud, you will get a private cloud server running in a few minutes, as I have showed in my previous video. They provide the fastest servers with great reliability and responsive support. AppCloud servers also already have SSH installed, configured and working. I will use AppCloud server to show how SSH works in this video. You can also get an AppCloud account and test everything you will see on this video and beyond. Let's start with the actual tutorial. First, you need to set up your client Linux machine. This is the computer you will use to connect from. It is pretty easy. Install OpenSSH client on your Linux computer and you are done. This is an example command for Debian and Debian based distros, such as Ubuntu. I provide the install commands for other distros in the description. If you also want to use Windows as a client, install PuTTY. Next, configure the computer you want to connect to. On the remote computer, you need to install OpenSSH server. Again, see the install commands for the other distros in the description. Obviously, you will need to have physical access to the remote computer to install this package. Check that SSH is running with systemctl status SSH. You should see that it is active. If it is not, start it manually. Or simply reboot the system. Next, you need to determine the IP address of this remote computer. The easiest way is to check the network settings. If you have a graphical desktop in that computer, open the network settings and search for IP address. This is how it looks in Plasma 5 and in Ubuntu GNOME. If you only have the command line on your remote computer, run IP A, usually you will see your IP address in the Echo 0 connection. Write down this address, you will need it to be able to connect to this remote computer. Firewall. It is possible that you use a firewall and it may block your remote access. So check open ports and you should see port 22 open in your remote computer. Again, I provide this command in the description. If you do not find port 22 open among open ports, go to your firewall settings and open it. If you use UFW or uncomplicated firewall, run this command. I talked about whether you need a firewall in Linux and how to use it in this video. I recommend you to watch it. How to connect to remote computer. In your client Linux computer, run SSH, username of your remote computer and the IP address of your remote computer. This is the IP address you wrote down in the previous step. If you get a warning, are you sure you want to continue connecting, type yes. After you type the password of your user at the remote computer, you will be logged in in a remote Linux computer. Now you can work on this remote computer as you would be sitting in front of that computer and using the terminal. If you simply want to work with files without running any programs, you can also connect to your remote server with FileZilla. In FileZilla, go to the site manager, Add new site, select secure FTP protocol, add your IP address, username, password and click connect. You will see your local files on the left and your remote files on the right. You can navigate here with your mouse 
and transfer files between your computers by simply moving them here. Similarly, you can add a remote server to your file manager. Go to the network in your file manager, click Add Network Folder, select SSH, give a name to this folder, provide the username of a remote account, IP address, for the protocol keep SFTP, and the remote folder path you want to connect to. Usually it is a remote user home folder. As a result, you will see all folders and files of your remote computer in your file manager. You can also forward graphical programs from your remote computer to your local computer. To do that, you simply need to add the option capital X during the login. Now, if you start any graphical program in the remote computer, it will open it in your local computer, like this Firefox in my case. Of course, the performance of these graphical programs will depend on your internet connection. Transfer files. To transfer a file to a remote computer in the terminal, run scp, path to the file on your local computer, and path to the file in the remote server. And from the remote computer to your local computer, simply type first the remote address, and then local. As you have seen, SSH is a pretty handy program, it is not difficult to install and use. However, there are some more configurations which I did not cover in this video. For example, you can enhance the security of your SSH connection with SSH keys and whitelisted IP addresses. I will cover this topic in the next video. So subscribe by clicking on the logo icon you see on your screen right now and do not forget to try UpCloud. I am sure you won't be disappointed. Thank you for watching.